What's up everyone? D Crack here. So all right guys, I'm pretty excited. Mr. Nightmare dropped a new video yesterday, I think. I'm just getting around to reacting to it now. It says three disturbing true block party stories. Like always guys, I'll link to the original video down below. Let's go ahead and check this out by Mr. Nightmare. Like always, I'll link to the original video down below guys. Make sure and go check out Mr. Nightmare. He's got some awesome videos. Let's go. Oh, I didn't like that sound. Jeez. <laughs> oh. I live on Long Island, New York. When I was a kid, our block used to throw a yearly block party. I had a few friends on the block that were in my grade, Mike and Danny. We would always hang out together at these block parties. My neighbors would go all out. There would be tables of baked goods, catered food. Some neighbors even had tables of alcohol out. Of course, we were like 13. No one was going to let us drink at that age. It was a Saturday, and people were setting up for the block party early in the day. The street was already closed off. It didn't really pick up until around 3. The three of us invited some other friends to come, and most of the day we were just messing around on the blow-up attractions or just eating people's baked goods. Eventually, some of our other friends left, and it got dark, but the party wouldn't end. I like baked goods. Yes, guys, I know I'm a fatty, but at least I admit it. <laughs> Until late at night. Danny and I started joking about how I could beat him at MLB. And while Mike and one of our other friends named Steve were somewhere else on the block, Danny and I decided to take a break from the block party and play each other in MLB. About an hour later, we went back outside to look for Mike and Steve. We ran into Steve, who said Mike went into his house like forever ago and didn't come out. So oh we God, the block no! Down to Mike's house and saw his parents. Who Where told the heck us he is Mike? Inside. We saw uh. his bedroom light was on and he was standing at his window. We started waving at him to come down. Unless it's it didn't not seem Mike. Like he even noticed us though. It might not be Mike. Screaming over the oh, blast no. of music would be kind of useless. So instead, I said, "Let's just go inside his house." We walked over to the stoop and tried the door, oh, but no. it was locked. <laughs> so we went around back to try the back door. This one was actually unlocked, so we let ourselves in to find Mike and tell him to come back outside. Naturally, we went right up the stairs towards his room. His door was cracked open, and naturally I went to push it open, expecting him to be in there. It's not Mike. Instead, oh, God. Instead, there was this tall man standing by the window looking outside. It's Slender his Man. hands resting on the windowsill. I backed up away from the door, frightened, but more so confused. I knew Mike's family, and I had no idea who this guy was. I backed away from the door and signaled for the other two to be quiet. I told them to go downstairs in as quiet a voice as I could. We didn't know uh, if that was one of Mike's no. relatives or not, <laughs> but either way, it was rude of us to barge into Mike's house like that, and we didn't want any relatives we didn't know to catch us. We left and went outside back to Mike's parents to ask who the man inside at the window was. They looked up at the window of their son's bedroom and Mike's mom let out a short scream, followed by his dad running towards the house to unlock the front door. Oh no! We watched as the man standing at the window turned and disappeared as we stood there waiting in anticipation. A crowd started to form and it became a scene as people were asking what was going on. Five minutes later, Mike and his dad came outside to the crowd. He had already called the cops. Mike was apparently hiding in his closet after he saw a random man from his room walking up the stairs. Oh, why? Oh, the block God, party was no. Shut down early and the cops pulled up briefly. Some random they searched dude? The house with Mike's dad, but couldn't Hell find him no. anywhere. Huh. I remember going home that night scared shitless, and I could only imagine at the time how scared Mike must have been. So just some random ass dude in the middle of the night and off my mouth the street? Was really dry, so I went downstairs to get some ice water. As I shut the fridge, I noticed something through the curtain in the kitchen. There's a light on the side of the house above the kitchen window that stays on all night, and it was exposing some shadow that wasn't usually there, shaped like a person. I knew better than to lift that curtain. I went straight to my parents' room and woke my dad up, who heard about the event that took place earlier down the street. He came down to look, but when we got to the kitchen, the shadow outside the window was gone. Which is confirmed it, it was a person. Is it that same freaking guy? My dad went outside no. to run around the property real quick, finding no one. 
I don't know if he fully took me seriously and believed I saw a shadow, because for some reason he didn't want to call the cops. I like to think I'm pretty sure that was the same man outside the window that night. What were the chances there could be such a coincidence that same night? I slept with one eye open that night. That sounds like a straight up creeper, guys. That sounds like some straight up freaking creeper. Hell no. <laughs> Something very traumatizing happened to me when I was a very little kid. I was like five or six. A nearby street was having a block party which is basically just where a block is closed off to traffic and all of the neighbors on the street chip in for food and activities. My older brother, who was like 11 or 12, took me with him to this block party. It was a weekend, so our parents were a little more lenient with the curfew. My brother apparently had some friends on this block, and he met up with them, with me following behind him. I remember him introducing me to some of his friends, but I was a really shy kid, so I didn't really say much to them. Most of the night was a blur because it was just so long ago, but somehow I got separated from my brother. At such a young age, I remember uh, panicking when I was no. lost. I was looking around everywhere for my brother. Eventually, I bumped into some tall old man, and he knelt down and asked me something along oh, the lines no. of where was my family. Some, and he said he didn't God, recognize me no. from the street. I told him I was there with my brother, but I lost him. He started acting all concerned and told me to come with him to his house so he could call my parents. Oh, no. I was naive no. and I followed him. Ignoring no. the words of any parents, don't talk to strangers. He led me through the crowd. Well, not only not talk to strangers, don't freaking go home with some creepy ass random old dude. Come on, kid, you have better common sense than that. As I held his hand and we got to his house. Once inside, he looked at me and smiled and asked if I wanted any snacks. I nodded my head shyly. He went to his pantry and grabbed a bag of chips. Then he told me to follow him upstairs. He led me to a small bedroom upstairs and told me to sit on the bed as he pulled up a chair in front of me and just This sat is down. the start of any freaking He told me to eat the chips. Kidnapping horror story. He asked uh. me to call my parents. And I believe he said he would in a moment. I honestly can't remember whatever creepy stuff he may have said. But he eventually made his way off the chair and onto the bed next to me, making oh, no signs God. of trying to make the phone call to my parents. All I have to say, guys, there's a lot of creepy horror stories out there, you know. But when it comes to creepy ass, you know, predators or pedophiles like this who do stuff to kids, just absolutely disgusting. I have two kids of my own. I have two boys. They're four and five. And if anyone ever did anything to one of my kids, oof. My ass would probably be going to prison. Or or something, guys. <laughs> he put his arm around my shoulders, and that's when the doorbell rang. And it was the most relieving sound I could have imagined. He looked at me and told me to wait there. Of course, when the old man got downstairs and opened the front door, I ran downstairs seeking the aid of whoever was at the door, and it happened to be my brother, his friends, and a couple adults. My brother oh, was told by no. someone that I was seen entering the old man's house earlier. Oh, God. My brother and the adults questioned the old man and I, mostly asking me why he brought me into his house. I gave my best six-year-old detailed description I could. Oh, he was only six it years old? was enough for everyone oh. to realize what might have been about to go down. One of the adults brought my brother and I to her house, where she called my parents and then the police. Oh. My mom and dad were over in a heartbeat, and the cops followed shortly. I asked my mom and dad before writing this what I said that got the cops to arrest the old man. And it was simply that I said the old man lied about calling my parents and started touching me. Oh, I didn't ask my parents anything else. That old dude. Quite frankly, I don't like talking or thinking about it too much. That old guy was screwed. Because I'm He's sure screwed. they were about to go very south. Oh, man. Thank God. Thank God that somebody saw... That little kid going to that house. Thank God. <laughs> My block had a block party in 2017. It was the first and only one ever to date. Our block sits right in front of a small section of woods. So woods connect my and some of my neighbor's yards. During the block party, some of us started getting bored because it was mostly catered to the younger kids of the block. But there was this one creepy, shady guy walking around the block. He had some big can-like thing in his hand. Yo, what's up with all these creepy guys? <laughs> when it comes to these horror stories, us, 
us men get a bad rap. It's always some creepy old guy or some creepy guy. Are there no women in these horror stories? I guess men are just all the creeps, apparently, in this world. That's wonderful. <laughs> and he kept spouting gibberish to people. Eventually, he came up to my friends and I and started saying the most random shit that honestly wasn't even coherent. We just walked away, assuming he was on drugs. Pretty soon after, five of my neighbors and I were down to play a game of manhunt with the field of play ranging from one house across the block party to the woods behind the houses across the street. I was on Jess and Kenny's team. We started in my backyard. The rule was we all had to hide in different places. So I told them I'd hide in the woods and try to sneak my way around the houses through the woods. And I suggested different hiding spots for them. I waited in the woods for a while expecting to see someone from the other team enter my backyard. Eventually, one of them snuck into the yard, and that's when I thought it was safe to start migrating. As I moved along, I started noticing some paint-like marks on a bunch of trees. They appeared to be what? big red X's. Paint marks? Area, oh, no. Just about every big tree had an X painted on it. <sighs> I heard screaming from the yard in front of me, meaning someone from the other team was chasing Kenny. So I ducked down and held position for a few. As I was idle in that position, I started hearing footsteps deeper in the woods. Then I heard a spraying-like sound. But the noise stopped before I could even turn around. I realized there was someone standing over there, deeper in the woods. The lights from the nearby houses was just enough to see him. He was looking at me. Apparently he stopped what he was doing when he spotted me. He started walking over to me, and I realized when he got closer that it was that creepy, crazy-seeming dude from earlier. That Something freaking creep- That freaking creepy guy is following him. Oh, no. It made sense. When he was like 10 feet away, he started speaking. He kept saying, X marks the spot, X marks the spot. I told him to fuck off as I turned and ran back to my backyard. No one was back there anymore. So I ran to find my friends in the block party and told them the game was off and explained what I just witnessed. So all six of us together marched back to the woods behind my backyard, and we started looking for him. He was nowhere to be found, but I did show my friends all the red X's he sprayed on the trees. I showed it to my dad later in the night when the block party was over. That's like some serial killer we could really crap right there. <laughs> to just get a good night's rest. That night I had a bad dream. It was about that creepy man from the woods. In this dream, he would just keep chasing me through the woods as I heard his creepy voice saying, X marks the spot. Then I would hear him spraying his can of spray paint. Oh, no. And that's when I woke up in my pitch black room. I looked at the clock, and it was only like one or two in the morning. Then, on the other side of no, my window, no, right no, my bed, no. there was someone talking. My whole body jumped. I looked out the window, and there was a big red X painted right in the center of it. Oh, hell no! Was the crazy man with the can. Though muffled, I heard him saying X marks the spot over and over, and he stood there, looking down at me in my bed. No! And he started hitting my window with his elbow, clearly trying to break it. I ran to get my dad, who's a huge burly dude. He looked out my window and saw the nut job still hitting the glass, which had yet to crack, surprisingly. Ugh! Oh. My dad started yelling taunts at the man, like he better be ready for an ass beating. Then my dad ran out of the room for the front door. I think it worked in scaring that whack job off because he stopped what he was doing and ran away. When my dad got to my window, I pointed him in the right direction and he ran off down the block. He was gone for a while, he didn't come back for like 10 minutes. He couldn't find the guy, but judging by the size of that crazy man, I know my dad could have pummeled him to the ground and I wish I saw it happen. The story doesn't end there, however. The reason I decided to tell the story now in 2019 is because just a few days ago, there was a big red X drawn on our front door. No, as well no. well as a bunch of trees in the woods. Not again. Backyard. Oh, God. Two nights ago, I even heard footsteps passing my bedroom window at some odd hour in the night. We don't have cameras, but my dad is thinking about installing some now. If anything else happens, I will update. What the hell? Why would this guy... Why would this guy just walk around 
spraying red X's on crap. What the? Well, guys, that was three disturbing true block party stories. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, please make sure and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell. Make sure and leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, peace.